gentlemen and welcome to this episode of what horse yes sir i keep getting these questions tell everybody how you feeling oh i'm feeling a lot better i'm mm -hmm. getting around moving i courted one today for the first time did you really yes mm -hmm. <laughs> i wish i'd have been there <laughs> i have a lot of people that have uh, text me and pm me about how's jerry feeling how's jerry i said well he's a little sore, but he's doing better. Yeah. He's getting mm -hmm. better and better. She asked me this question tomorrow after I sleep after I'm caught in one today. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't be doing a show tomorrow, so you'll be out of luck. But yeah. Go back and cart another. <laughs> that, that's just, I mean, just keep on, keep yeah. on. That way you, you'll eventually work out of it. That's yeah. the way to do soreness now. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, You're and, exactly right. i tell you something. Go buy you a hot tub, hook a cart to it, and... Sit in that hot tub by that horse. <laughs> that horse can generate the, the motion in the th tub. Mm-hmm. That'll work. Well, you do your deal, and then we're fixing to start doing some roasting. That'll work. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles, along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had, since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Instead of telling you about an affordable communication service that will save you money for a rainy day, I'm going to let one of my clients from Columbia Dental Group tell you all about Host My Services. You're not losing any service, your phone calls, you don't drop any calls, have any issues at all. They have the app where you can have an off-site person. They just have the app on their phone. They can use it from there. Like you should definitely get a quote because even buying a whole new phone system is cheaper than what you're going to pay for with Verizon or AT&T or anybody else through them. And the quality is just the customer service. Customer service, I talk to him. There's two things to remember when checking out Host My Communication Services. Number one is free analysis of your current communication cost. Number two is there's no capital outlay for the equipment. Two great reasons to call 931-581-4411 today and start saving for that rainy day. People in Tennessee are starting a movement. Ouch. Thank you. To clean up the litter on our roadways. Litter hurts our environment and endangers wildlife, and it affects our quality of life. Here, cut me. Thank you. Help keep our state litter free. That's true. Visit NobodyTrashesTennessee.com and be a part of the solution to end littering. Thank you. Saving the best for last. That's right. Nobody trashes Tennessee. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3. And be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. All right, welcome back. 
I am going to make a couple of announcements because we're getting we're getting into the final of the year now. We've got the uh, Celebrations Fall Classic will be October 31st through November the 2nd at Cooper Steel Arena in Shelbyville, Tennessee. Judges will be Lee Boyd, Renee Carlton, and Brandon Gibbings. And then the following week, or a couple of weeks later, 14th through the 16th, Tunica, Mississippi will be the finale. That's where all of us come together. And uh, judges will be Bill, Bill Cantrell, Rod Slagle, and Link Webb. So that's, that's going to be the a good way to kick off the end of the season, especially when you look at East Tennessee. Yeah. 556 entries. They finished out right about a 97% compliance rate. Yes. So that that is super good. So we got a lot going on. There's one thing I did want to say is that the information about Reimer leaving the, the USDA was not correct. He's still there, but there's a lot of things going on right now that, Jerry, that uh, so, so, something really bothers me is this. For years and years, the Humane Society of the United States has uh, said, well, you don't need to be riding the horses. You don't need to do this. Nobody needs to ride a horse. That's abuse to ride a horse. And then uh, Reimer comes out when they're questioning him about the in-ring injuries being called HPA violations, and they question him about it, his reply is, the abuse is riding the horse. Now that comes straight from the Humane Society of the yes. United States. So he, he is more or less, in so many words, admitted that they cater to what the Humane Society of the United States wants. Yes. They don't cater to what's right. They don't look at the things that, that should be. And that, that, really, that really bothers me. It bothers me a lot. I'm, I'm glad he's still there. I want him to where, when everything comes to a head, I want him to be right where they can get him right quick. Yes. It, it, the, the whole thing, Jerry, is uh, you riding a horse is abuse. God gave us those horses. And you know, you think about 90 years ago, 89 years, that was transportation for a lot of people. Tell me about it. Was I horses. Mean, I mean, they worked them all day and traveled and went home and hooked them to a court and went and, and took their family to town. Strolling Jim drove a milk cart and brought two lovers together at night because he would ride from Hillsborough to Winchester or Deckard. Yeah. And, and, to, and you look back at the history, the United States Cavalry, the, uh, the plow in the fields, the horses plow in the fields actually, to me, wore the burden, but that was the burden. Yeah. Uh, the horses today, I mean, when you say riding a horse is abuse, I wonder what the saddlebreds are going to say about that. <laughs> well, Gary, I mean, you think about it. The, the horse of today yeah. live way better than most people do, do today. I know. They got an insurance plan. They got a massage. They do their feet. They do, and we showed last week on the show where you give them a horse a massage. You know, yeah. most people ain't. I, I'm 54 years old, and I don't think I ever had a massage in my life. I, I had one a long time ago. But no, I, I'm going to take that back. I, I had two because I had one done at a chiropractic office that they said, well, this, this ain't working. Let's try a massage. And that woman might just about killed me. You know, you think about it, you, get your, you get them teeth done. Yep. Every six to eight weeks, you're getting their feet done. They get in the bath. They're getting fed. They get the stall clean. Yep. They get everything. Go out there and ride maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day. You get work. You come in. You get a good bath. You get the vet to come and give you all your shots, warm you, and all that stuff. I mean, you just think about the it. The dentist. That's right. 
when I first told a friend of mine, I said, I got to go over, I got a dentist coming to my horse day. He said, you do what? I said, they get their teeth fixed too. I mean, people, people don't realize how well these horses are treated. Yes. And we, we, we're in a battle. I mean, we got a major lawsuit, and, and I want to thank uh, Kim Lewis and Tom Gold. I mean, the, the, those those are two. Everybody needs to thank them. When, whenever you see them, you need to uh, say, "Hey, I want to thank you," because they, they, those two good people that have, have stuck their neck out for this industry in these lawsuits. But when we go to court, to me, we start looking at everything that's done for the horse. And I'm not saying we don't have bad apples. Every industry has bad apples. You're right. You're exactly but right. For someone to say riding a horse is abuse, to me, is, is just the ultimate statement that really points the finger at who is really behind all of this. And that's the Humane Society of the United States. Yes. I mean, they're the ones that's pushing this. This past act more or less was written by them. And now we're, we're facing a situation where if, if the USDA allows the Humane Society to have their way and we, we do not stand up to them, and, and I'm telling the USEF and the ESC both, if y'all think that you're going to stand over there in a corner and watch everybody else take the hit, you are dreaming, daydreaming. You need to wake up. When Reimer says riding a horse is abuse, that's every horse. That's not just the walking horse. That's every horse. That's right. So. Everybody needs to wake up and look at what's happening. If if we allow people to come in and just any way they want to say, well, we don't like this, so you're not going to do it anymore. And that's what this boils down to. It boils down to one group not liking something, so they're going to do everything they can to point a finger at us. Mm -hmm. But the point is this. All, every, every survey, every test, everything that's ever been done to show what harms the horse, everything that harms the horse is already illegal. Yes. It's all illegal. The shoes don't hurt the horse. The pads don't hurt the horse. The action device does not hurt the horse. Everything we've gone through, we have proven that the horse is fine the way we do it. So now we're looking at a situation to where they can't prove it, so they just make up these rules and regulations that they can enforce their agenda on us through their rulemaking. Yes. And that, that's why I'm hoping that we get a judge with a a, a good mindset and an understanding. It'd be great if we got someone that was equine savvy 100% to where he could look at it and, and laugh. I've, I've had people that tell me that are equine savvy that some of the things our horses have to go through is unreal. Yeah. I mean, we, we've had a lot of people that just do nothing but trail ride and say, well, oh, a horse couldn't pass that. And we've already know the saddlebreds aren't going to stand still and let you palpate them. Uh, they wouldn't let Granny palpate them. They wouldn't let the soul palpate them. Uh, they ain't going to let nobody palpate them. Pay them. That's right. So our horse can flinch, and he's out. Their horse can jerk every which way, and they let him show. But that's not going to work. In the end, they're going to be got to. They're, they're going to. We are the domino, and I wish these other breeds would understand that and say, hey, we need to get in there and help them because by not helping us, they're helping the USDA and they're helping the Humane Society of the United States, and they can stand there and point the finger at us and say, well, we don't do this and we don't do that. 
I beg your pardon. For 50 years, you did not follow the regulations. You did not tell when you'd find a substance on a horse. You suspended the trainer. Well and good, but they never told the USDA. They never let it be known that that was happening. Yes. That was the Achilles heel that got them because the USDA said, we don't need to check them breeds. They don't soar their horse. Ah, but they suspended all these people for doing exactly what you're saying they didn't do. Mm -hmm. So the USDA didn't do their job either. They was too busy attacking us to go look at the other breeds, and the other breeds said they ain't looking at us, so we're not going to report this. Yes. We're not going to let them know this. And that's even the Arabians. They didn't report theirs either. So the Morgans, they didn't report theirs. The Saddlebred didn't report theirs. The only one that was following the HPA was the most inspected horse in the equine industry, yes. and that's the Tennessee walking horse. And, and to me, I've about had my feel of other breeds saying, well, y'all do this and y'all do that. I beg your pardon. We're not the ones that's skirting the law and hiding that's right. the things. We're, we're, we're bringing it out open, and we even police ourselves. Yeah, you get a report every time, at every, after every horse show, you get a report on every horse, whatever violation or whatever that horse have is at that horse show. That's right, and, and we're the only ones that did it. Everybody else, they turned around and said, well, we ain't gonna do that. No, nah, we ain't gonna do that. Well, I got news for you. You didn't do it and you got caught, and now you're gonna pay the price for it. So they, they can, uh, other breeds, they can stand up here and act like they're lily white, well, we already know that you're the only ones that was breaking the law yes. for over 50 years. We were following the law. Y'all were breaking the law. And a lot of this is y'all's fault. If you'd have kept your mouth shut and sat over there in the corner, everything may be different, mm -hmm. but that wasn't the way it was. A lot of them members of the Humane Society, too, y'all pushed them to come and get us. And now it's old saying, oh, you run into a burning house, you're going to get burned. burned. That's right. Well, they ran in. Now they're going to get burned. Here's something that we are very proud of that uh, I didn't know we was going to show this until he brought it up. But take a look at this baby here. Now, that was PAP. That was the first time, the first time that he was ever had a halter on, ever led, yep. anything. And I've got another one, but Jerry asked me not to put it out. <laughs> he didn't want he didn't want anybody to see the one after he had done this for a couple of days. How easy he walked with Amber up and down that road. I just want to be a shock when they see him because I'm gonna <laughs> tell you this horse is a, that coat right there is very well built behind. He can use his, uh, his hey, back he, end. He is. Uh, I'm proud of him. And, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm awfully proud of I'm Honors, the two-year-old. We, uh, I put a video on Facebook of him, and uh, even Dick people said, they lying to you when I showed him. I said, that's about the fourth or fifth time someone's been on his back, Dick. I said, I know that. You got hurt, yeah. you couldn't ride him. That's right. So, all right, we got some more video. This is Sir. This was after his massage. So we're, we're going to get ready to let Amber show him, I believe. Yes. She uh, she wanted to show him, and, and I have no quirks about it. I know uh, Olivia is uh, normally shows him for me, but it's Christmas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Christmas anyway. That, uh, these horses, that we've got, that one right there had not been ridden in what, three days? Three or four days. Three or four days, we got him a massage and uh, chiropractic treatment. And Xavier did a fantastic yes, job she on did. it, buddy. Now she did, she, she, uh, she did the number. <coughs> she did the number on him and he felt good. We went out to Dick Saturday and uh, we did Cerveza, uh -huh. and uh, Dick said, I'm not going to tell her what I'm looking for. I'm going to see if she can find it. 
Well, she found it, uh -huh. and he said she's got it. <laughs> yeah, because she she worked on it. But horses are just like people; they get sore and, and uh, need a little help. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's just natural for for bring someone in and work on them and, and watch the way they do. She does a good. Work. She does a good job well, on that. I thought so. We're going to take off up to East Tennessee. We had some. They had. 556 entries with a little over 97% compliance rate. This was your amateur gentleman's class. Joe Paul and Shane Porterfield took the blue. A home run by Ted and Greg Kaiser was reserved. Adeline Ritz and Jack Heppington, I'm glad to see Jack back in the saddle, was third. I'm Nashville, Brian Perkins, Coach's Rare Talent, Steve Davis, Mossberg, Randy Stone, Honors Rebel, Jeff Long, Cash's Bold Fresh, Carol Counts, Camasta Laquita, Dan Waddell, even though I don't think Dan was in that class, and uh, the Sky Coach, Ossie Allison, finished out the ribbons. That's 10 horses in that class. Yeah. They had a heck of a show up there. Hey, 556 entries in yep. three days. I'd say they did. I would say they did. About as well as you can expect. Out there, oh, yeah. Too. Right here is Joe Pod Shane Porterfield. I tell you, that's a real good horse right there. I tell you what, he, he just flat, flat out walks. Yes. Smooth as silk and gets it done. I love that slow, flat walk. I mean, Shame that horse go, goes together very yeah. well. Oh, they do. I do like that slow, flat walk. Yeah. Right here is your amateur ladies class. i tell you something right here. Now, this is something. Aubrey Derrickson. I'm not sure that young lady has just turned 18, I guess. But her and Lucky Strike, now they, they do well. Aubrey Derrickson took the blue for Ralph Derrickson on He's a Lucky Strike. I must have spoke Lucky Strike here. Yeah. <laughs> Ozark and April Jeffers was reserved. Harley Quinn, world champion. Beth Collins Stalwart was third. Diplomatic Immunity, Barbara Rader. Magnificent Jen, Sister Milligan, Tito's Jacqueline Up Church, Cash's Bold and Fresh, Peggy Champion, Cutting in Line, Shay Sproles, Stagecoach Mary, Callie Lovett, and I'm an NRA fan. Callie Range finished out the ribbons. show right there. Good class of horses. Yes, it is. I'll tell you what, now you, they can say what they want, they put on a show up there. Yep. There he is, he's a lucky strike. And Aubrey Derrickson for Ralph Derrickson was your winner. Amateur ladies. I want to thank my buddy Bob Roach. He supplied us with the video for this week. He uh, 
good friend, and I do appreciate it. Right there is El Predictive Storm. And this is Ali Joe entered the counter class. Okay. <laughs> Look at there. That young lady gets in everything. El Predictive Storm and Ali Joe Jacobs. She was reserved in that counter class. Now, buddy, that's something. Yep. Now, here's your youth ponies. Look at there. That's one good pony. Oh, buddy. yeah, that is a good pony. The Hoss and Ally Joe Jacobs won the pony class for the Jacobs family. The Hoss, I love that name. Knock on wood, Casey Collinger, out of Alcatraz, Gracie Turner, and showing off, Daisy McLeod finished out the ribbon. Dale's predicted storm, now she's on the Hoss. They showed quite a bit up there. Oh, they, yeah. they had a good weekend. But I tell you, Jake tickles me. He 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 will not run an ad on himself, but he sure will run them on his dog. Yeah. He says, let's headline her. She she tickled me. They they did the uh, pro am, and and I'm just wondering. I meant to ask Jake, and I forgot to. If she pulled the same deal on <laughs> on RM as she pulled on him, because yeah. <laughs> when he did the am am with her or pro am with her, yeah. she said, "Hey, the pro's supposed to go the second way." <laughs> there he is, the Hoss and Ali Joe Jacobs for the Jacobs family. Tell you what, they had a great show up there. And that horse. Oh, right yeah, there, they did have a really good show. That horse right there is just flat out walking. And this is another tribute to these horses, too. I seen Dixie and the Hoss both showed twice. Mm -hmm. Right here is your Pro Am. I seen Dixie and Ali Joe Jacobs took the blue with R.M. Kelly. Charlie's Perfect Angel, Hayden Burks and Tara Rhodes. Cousin Bob, Shane Porterfield and Tanner Burks. Bourbon Street, Blaze Picard. Honoring my Marine, Keith Bicknell and Sharon DeWeese. He's Ballistic, Dr. David Bullock and Ryan Blackburn. Frenchie, Linda Shrivener and Dickie Shrivener. Charlie's Hellcat, Joanne Cardell, April French. Moonlight Romeo, is that you? <laughs> Derek Monahan and Ellie Granis. And out of control, Chris Zan and Alex Johnson. People up there are flat yelling. Oh, yeah. I want to get it back to where the stands are packed. Packed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, now, people need to understand this was up in East Tennessee. And a lot of East Tennessee is recovering. Yes. Along with North Carolina. And I'll do a shout out to all those volunteers that went up there because the walking horse industry was well presented, believe me. <clears throat> and there it is, Pro-Am class winner, I sang Dixie, Arm Kelly, and Ali Joe Jacobs. What more could you ask for? Good horse. That Ali Joe, she's a good little rider now. Yeah, she is. Now she gets it done. I'll tell you what, man, I like it because she rides in all them classes. Oh, she, she's, yeah. not so, she's not selective. She just says, throw a, whole, throw a saddle on it. And here's the youth 11 under championship. Ali Joe came back in on the Haas and took the blue in that class. 
the Megadon and Wilder Way was reserved. Greek Freak, Ellie Grace Lunksford, third G-Ride, Gracie Collinger, Sunday Rose, Bentley Baum, Jake Ryan, Harlan Lawrence, Rossberger, Sailor Jackson, and the Sportster, Grace Tucker, finished out the ribbon. I tell you what, that Wilder Way is becoming oh, a good yeah. Jackie. But I want you to look at these kids now, because we're going to be talking quite a bit about them. Oh, yeah. Here. Little Bentley, he's getting better and better, buddy. You know, he never he never showed the lead line. No. Took that horse away from his grandma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like you said, that crowd getting behind them over there. That's oh, one thing you can say about them shows over at East Tennessee. Oh, yeah. If they get a good horse in that class, they're going to get behind it and go to holler for it. They go screaming and yell. They do the yes. same thing in North Carolina. Yep. There you go, Bentley. Tell you what, that the hoss is, is, Yeah. I mean, you, you that's hard to beat. It really is. There he is, the hoss and Allie Joe Jacobs. Let me know your championship. That's some smooth riding there, Jerry. Oh, yeah. I tell you what, they, they had a good show. Oh, they had a real good show there. I mean, you can get up there and you, you come all that way and then you get to have the show like that. That's what it's all, all about. about. Mm -hmm. I just hope these last two shows that we have this year, if we can have them like that. It'll end on a happy note. Yep. Real happy. Well, it's your time. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Giles Dunn is a leader in both cultured and lab-grown diamonds. Located at 234 North Jackson Street in Tullahoma, Tennessee, Giles Dunn is well known for his beautifully designed jewelry. From that special diamond for your special wedding day to the one that says I love you more, Giles Dunn is the place to shop if you want to say it with diamonds. Open five days a week and always ready to assist you in that one-in-a-lifetime purchase. To set an appointment for cultured or lab-grown diamond viewing, call 931-563-7800. Hey Tennessee, Ross Chastain here, the guy who likes to smash watermelons on the front stretch at Nashville Super Speedway. But you know what I never smash? Safety rules. Racing's all about control, and the same goes for life on the road. So use your melon and don't mix drinking and driving. It's like trying to race with a busted engine. Be a pit crew hero. And if you've had a few, pass the keys to a sober friend because we're all racing toward a safer Tennessee and we want you there at the finish line. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax-deductible donation as fast as a 501c3. And be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. All right, welcome back. We're going to do something that I've wanted to do. And I finally decided I was going to do it. But we, we talk about our future. And that's what I want to talk about and what we're going to talk about today. Our future in this industry and who it depends on. Yes. And, and you and I, I mean, we're here. 
but we've got some youth coming up that from all parts of the country and to me that that's our future yeah that's what it is we really future. really need to dwell on and that's what we need to fight for because these kids deserve the same thing we had yes because growing up there wasn't nothing like going to the walking horse show nope you're exactly right and it, it just I don't know, you just look forward to Saturday night, Friday night, or a three night show, and then when the celebration come, I mean, it was like a 10 days of a carnival. Just yes. Having a good times every night. But here we go. Now these, these youth right here is what our future depends on. Right here is Ruth Collins. I do believe this is equitation. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it is. I told CJ I don't want the names of the horses because I don't care. I'm talking about the youth. Yes. And what they mean to this industry and what we need to do to make sure that there's an industry for them. And battling this lawsuit is one of the things that will guarantee that these kids will have a future. Oh, yeah. There's Kate Cowan. Yeah, this is equitation. But the, these youngsters are important to our future. Now, they are. They're very important to our future. Well, the biggest thing of it to me with this youth and the way the world is today, Jerry, it gets them from the TV, playing video games or whatever. They out there enjoying an animal and learning, you know, how to take care of stuff and how to ride and everything else. It, it means it means it a means lot. a lot. Right there is Cade McAllister. These these youngsters right here, they they deserve their time in the saddle for the future. Yes, and it's up to us to see that they get it. And that's why donating to the FAST Legal Fund, attending these shows, fighting for the future. Here's Reef family. Now, here, look at her family. Look at her family tree. Yes. Look at who her dad is, her grandfather, uh -huh. her grandmother, uncles, aunts, all of them. And then now here's this young lady. Yeah. She's out there. So I've even seen her working with her dad chewing horses. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, that that's that's our future. That's right. Harper Grider. Look at her family. Mm hmm I mean you, you look at the tree and then you look at these youngsters and what they mean to this industry. I mean her dad trains horses. Oh yeah. And, I mean it it it's just, I, I don't know. I, I look at it and I say, our future, this is it. And we need to fight for it. Callie DeVall. To me, this is what we're fighting for. I mean, we all of us want to keep our show horse. But this, this needs to be the number one topic of our battle is what it means to our youth in the future. Well, it's just like a lot of us that's in this horse business today, we were raised up in it as a kid, and you now the ones that were raised up then got kids, they want their kids to be raised up in it. Here's Frank, Frank Clark. Frank's a good football player too, buddy. You know, look at his look at his parents, his yes. dad and his granddad and stuff like that, raised up in this horse business. Uncles, aunts. Yeah. I mean, dead, but multi-time celebration judge, horse yeah. trainer. Just, uh... Our future. Emory Sims. Yep. You know, her mom, her grandmother, all of them was up in his horse business, raised up in his horse business and stuff. This is, this is what we're fighting for, folks. Yeah. Everybody needs to know that. 
these kids, the youth, the future. Madeline Cannon. And I know we're not going to have ever youth that's in this industry. We're not going to have them on here, and I know that. We're, some of them we're going to miss. But I'm still thinking about them. Yes. Here, Tucker Johnson. His family, been Tell in this business for a long Susie, time. Yeah. Her husband. I mean, and now it's their turn. Yeah. So, and that's what we need to fight for. We need to fight for these kids. That's our future. I just wish there was more programs we could come up with to get kids involved. Bentley Baum, his whole family, well, yes. everybody, his, year, his grandmother. Man, he made a heck of a show tonight, making our Blue Ribbon ride for class number five, our youth 11 and under. It's entry number 722, a bit of change, and Bentley Baum for Jacob Baum of Shelbyville, a bit of change, and Bentley Baum, entry number 722. I mean, we watched his dad yes. ride uh -huh. when he was that big. That's right. Maxine Beasley. How many years have we watched her? In the That's Saturday? right. Mm -hmm. All the way from lead line. That's right. Now she's 16 years old. Yeah. But she still deserves the rest of her life right. being mm -hmm. able to ride these horses. Her and her sister both. And here's BB. Beasley for Beth Beasley of Athens, Alabama. The country lineman. And here's the country lineman and BB Beasley. And across the forward victory, first place on all of those scorecards. I just believe with these kids, we fight for this industry. Our, our yeah. future is in good hands with them. I mean, they. They love to ride. Yeah. They get out there and, hey, can't have this without him. That's right. Eli Cunningham. I mean, that's what I'm saying, but I mean, his family been in this business for a long time. Oh, tell me about it. His mother was a rider. Yep. Now he's riding. And believe it or not, his granddaddy was a rider. Yep. And it was a pretty good, was a real good one. <laughs> you ain't gonna brag on that no, one. No, I, I don't wanna brag on too much. He might get hit. Uh, Allie get Joe Jacobs. Yep. Now here's one that if you put a saddle on it, she'll ride it. Yep. And a lot of those kids are the same way. Uh-huh. But she she doesn't care if it's flat shot or performance. Some of them won't perform it. Some of them won't flat shot. Some of them have their preference. Allie Joe. Yeah. She has no preference. Put a saddle on it, I'll ride it. Yeah. But it's a horse, and that's what everybody needs to realize. That's one of the things I love more than anything. Is, and there's Abby Smith, her family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very involved. That was one of my favorite time, things to do when I was a kid. Yeah. Ride a pony. Later on, I rode a horse. I've even rode a mule. Yeah. If I could ride it, I'd, I'd go, I'd ride it. Just, uh, Caroline Wesley Way. That's the yep. other one. Her family. Her family. Yeah, that's right. I just wish there was a way that we could put every one of them on here that, cause all of them mean a bunch. Oh yeah. I mean, every one of these kids are just, what can I say, it's, it's our future. And we need to protect this industry for them.
In the last 22 years, I've watched a lot of them grow up. Look there. That's right. And right there, the whole family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole family. She looks just like her mother. Oh, yeah. Riley Nichols. Tell you what, I mean, her, I mean, that, uh, all, yeah, her family team, that's too. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you just when you look, Levi Parker. Yeah. When I think of the chance that uh, there's people that don't want this for these yeah. kids. That really, it really gets to me. Oh, yeah. Boston Kate Tillman. Mm hmm. That BKT. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, her dad and stuff like that. And family, family, family. Been, always been for a long time. Yep. They've been in the industry, worked in the yep. industry, doing. So th these are things that, that I just. People sit back and look. You know, this horse keeps these kids busy. That's right. They're not out getting in trouble, running the streets. They're at horse shows. Harper Lawrence, Shane Porterfield's granddaughter. Uh -huh. He's looking for a future for them. Matter yep. of fact, he bought different horses for their future so they can ride. There's Harper Lawrence. I look back at, from lead line all the way up, the kids that have graduated on up yeah. into, it, and it's just amazing that once they get hooked on a horse, it's kind of like they stay hooked. They hook, hook. yeah, you're right. You Harlan Lawrence, that's the other granddaughter. Mm -hmm. You may have some that leave the horse for a while, but then you look up and they're, they're back. back. Yeah. <laughs> they're right, right back. <laughs> I know Shane wants a future in horses oh, yeah. for them. Wilder way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but he is getting into this horse. Mm -hmm. and you look at his family. I mean, there's a circle there. That's right. His aunt, his mother, his grandfather, his father. Yep. Yeah, I believe his father was the youngest guy that won the celebration, wasn't it? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Elliot Way. We just keep bringing them. Yeah. I believe you're right. But, um. Super stock, wasn't it? No, touch. Touch, touch, that's right. Mm -hmm.
Hell, I'm old. I'm allowed yeah. to make a mistake. <laughs> Am I black? Yep. Look at her family. I know. I'd re I'm going to tell you, it, in all honesty, a lot of times when you're at a horse show, the youth classes are the best classes. Class, that's right. Because they, a lot of the times, they have the better horses. Horses. Mm hmm. And very few of them that you can look at and say, well, they can't ride. Cause yeah. every one of them can flat ride a horse. Horse, that's you exactly right. She sets a horse like a trainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sits back in that deep seat. Skylin Wilson. Yeah. That young lady is equine horse inside oh, and yeah. out. Mm -hmm. She goes to a Christian school in Huntsville, and uh, she does reports on horses. Very nice young lady. Yes. All right, but that, yep. that to me, our future, that's, that's what I'm, that's, where that's that. what we're fighting for, mm -hmm. people, so get with fast, jump in there, help build the battle, we'll get it done. Tell you what, we're going to take a pause for our sponsors, and then we're going to finish up the show with a real good class. That'll work. A good class, believe me. We'll be right back. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old, whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you're on one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. All righty. We're going to turn back the clock just a little bit because uh, breeding season is on us. And a lot of horses or mares are being bred. And I'm just going to point out one that I believe is going to be a good breeder, but we're going to show the state class from 2024. Mm -hmm. One good class. This was your World Grand Championship from 2024. There was your eventual winner. Yep. Tell you what, he was a walking booger oh, he that was. night. And he was in there with some great horses. Walk 
Good horse. And uh, there were several good ones in there. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to tell you like it is. There's several real good ones in there. Crowd getting into oh, it. Oh, yeah, he is getting into it. You know, that is a thrill when you stand in there oh, watching yeah. that. It just, I mean, just <laughs> the the thrill of it. And yeah. The, the, I don't know. It's kind of like UT winning a back a football game. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I'll let you. <laughs> Here he is, Cavender and Tim Smith for Bruce and Robin McDonald. Man. Putting on a show, ain't he? He is. Putting on a show. I was real happy for Bruce and Robin. I really was, because Bruce it, it does a lot for this industry. Uh -huh. He's a big part of this industry. And just to be quite honest, he's just a super good guy. Yeah. Next week, I'm going to come up with another World Grand Championship class to, to show. Because they, they mean a lot. Oh, yeah, you, that's right. When you when you get a World Grand Championship, you, you to me, you ought to put it on the shelf sure. mm -hmm. and just sit there and look at it. And look at it. You're exactly right. Go. Well, I got noticed <clears throat> right here that we don't have but a couple of seconds left. So I want to wish everybody a good weekend. Look forward to next week. And good luck. And, and be see safe. See y'all next week. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. I got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, uh, please start talking.